This is Women Road Warriors with Shelley Johnson and Kathy Takaro. If you drive long haul, short haul, or heavy haul, they're here to empower and inspire women in the trades on TNCRadio.live. So gear down, sit back, and enjoy. Welcome to Women Road Warriors with Shelley Johnson and Kathy DeCaro. We're a show that works to inspire and empower women in trucking and the trades and every profession. We tackle all kinds of topics and work to encourage women to be their very best with informative guests and women who've been champions. I'm Shelley and I'm Kathy. No topic is not allowed on our rig. We tackle the tough topics along with the not so tough topics. And we like to feature experts and celebrities who can assist women in being the very best they can be. We also like to feature real women champions and examples of strength over adversity. There's no one who exemplifies this more than Ekaterina Curry. Born in communist Bulgaria, she dealt with all kinds of challenges that stood in the way of her success. One day she decided she'd had enough and was going to change all that. She left her homeland at the age of 17 and traveled alone with one suitcase to the United States. She proceeded to work hard and climb to incredible levels. She went on to graduate from Yale and Brigham Young University and made her way up the ranks on Wall Street. E. Katarina is now a global operations leader in financial services. Her passion is elevating people, teams, and companies and transforming them from good to great. Her story is nothing short of compelling, and she has an amazing message She works to empower people by teaching them how to face and overcome obstacles. We wanted to learn more, so we have her on the show today. Welcome, Ekaterina. Shelly, glad to be with you and Kathy. Thank you for the invitation. Oh, this is going to be wonderful. So happy that you made it to to us. It's awesome. Looking forward to it. I am excited, too. So I understand you go by Katie, so I thought I'd call you that for the rest of the show, if that sounds good to you. Absolutely. Wonderful. How about you begin telling us of your incredible story and what you experienced living in communist Bulgaria, what it was a Soviet bloc country, and what motivated you to come to the U.S. at 17? That's just incredible. Yes. Well, I was fortunate enough to grow up in a small town in the mountains. It was quite remote. It's about a five-hour drive from the capital of Bulgaria, and it's in the southern part near the border with Greece. It's a beautiful place with Christmas trees everywhere, with a lot of snow, um, and it's relatively small, a 15,000 people town. I had a great childhood growing up, with the exception that it was the 1980s and early 1990s when Bulgaria was really struggling. Like you said, it was the fall of communism, and we faced hyperinflation. The prices of goods and when you go to the store prices would go up on a daily basis the bulgarian currency got devalued multiple times so you would cut a zero and then all of a sudden you'd find yourself with a lot less money and it was really challenging time economically and i remember i was a a teenager at that time a young teenager and i remember one winter my mom had sent me to the grocery store it was a small grocery store on our street it was cold it was in the evening it was dark i went in there and there was uh, bread and mayonnaise and a few other things but not not a lot of things there and i think at that time i kind of had a maybe an epiphany um, and maybe that was one of my pivotal moment in life I knew that there was a better way and there had to be a better way to move forward and and to live. And so I think that the idea of coming to the United States and going to school, it was born at that time on that small store in a small street in a small town in the remote mountains when I, I knew and I kind of decided and I hoped that I would have an opportunity, a different opportunity to for my goals and my dreams and also to help others as well and so it started there it's interesting what our aha moments are that just suddenly motivate us and for you to realize this at such a young age that's just amazing 
I think it was intuition more than anything else. Mm -hmm. I just kind of felt it in my gut. And, and I, I knew that I deeply wanted to come to the U.S. and uh, to experience a different life. And with all my learning and, uh, you know, with, with my knowledge to also be able to, to contribute and help people in Bulgaria, but also, um, you know, my family here and, you know, my friends here in the U.S. as well. So fast forward, I went through high school and I was very fortunate to get admitted to a U.S. university on a full scholarship. And it, it took a lot of studying and it took a lot of help from many people. And that was one of my first lessons I learned in life, that you cannot accomplish things alone. Mm -hmm. We all need the community around us. We need our family. We need our friends. We need strangers and a lot of kind people that, um, that, that help us along the way. Some help us with advice. Some help us with practical help. Um, but help comes in different ways. But we are not able to rise and accomplish our goals without the help of others. So I think that was my kind of my first lesson. So mm -hmm. then fast forward and in August, August 24th of 1993, I landed in the US. It was my first time on an airplane. Uh, I had never, never been on an airplane and I flew from Bulgaria to um, Germany because there is no direct flight from Bulgaria to the US. And then I flew from Germany um, to uh, Los Angeles. And when I landed in LA, I thought that I knew English and I had studied English in high school, but everyone spoke so quickly and everyone's from a different part of the world. And mm -hmm. all of a sudden I was like, oh my gosh, you know, I am going to be here. Um, you know, on my own with, with some friends, um, you know, I, I had uh, some friends that I traveled with, but how am I going to make it here? Uh, but it was such an adventure. And, you know, now I have a 17 year old son and I look at him and uh, thanks goodness for the adventurous spirit of the youth because I came because I was looking for a better life and I was powered by this adventure and this desire to, to experience and to have better opportunities. Um, and life was just so exciting. I was, um, you know, walked into a large grocery store for the very first time and I couldn't believe the availability of Oh, things and foods and all the choices. And I was overwhelmed and I tasted things for the first time. Um, and, you know, now life is different. And, <laughs> you know, the world is very different now, 30 years later. Mm -hmm. But uh, it was an exciting time to come to the U.S. and to, to be starting a new life here. Oh, my goodness. Yes. So you had to have been a bit terrified and exhilarated and excited at the same time. That, that's exactly how I felt, Shelly. I felt excited and I was optimistic, but I was also scared. And it was the first time I lived away from home. Yeah. And I was young and I had to figure out how to open a bank account and um, how I, I got a job. I was very blessed and fortunate to have an awesome academic advisor in school who helped me um, get set up for my classes at school and he also helped me get my first job so no sooner did I arrive but I started working in a restaurant and it was a busy life adjusting to the US adjusting to classes and school working 20 hours a week making friends learning about the new culture improving my English it was an exciting time it was a uh, the first three months were very hard. I missed my family so much. Sure. And uh, unlike today where, you know, you could call them and you, you can talk to them and you can do video calls. I corresponded with them by letters. Uh -huh. And every weekend I wrote them a letter and, and posted it in the mail. And every weekend I got a letter from them. So it was a lot harder. Once a month, I called them on the phone. I couldn't afford to call them more often. It was very expensive. Um, and I think the, while it was challenging, it really, it was one of the big obstacles that I faced that 
taught me to be resourceful and also taught me to look inside and find, dig deep and find strength that I didn't know that I had and lean on that and uh, look, look forward to the future with optimism and push away my fears. Would you say that that mm. is what set up your momentum in the direction you headed? Because it's amazing what you've been able to accomplish. I think so. I think that this um, digging deep and finding strength and drawing upon that strength is, uh, I think it helped me to overcome some of my anxiety and some of my fear and some of my um in some of the challenges and it's not that the challenges went away I faced like everyone else many many challenges but I think that hunger and the um, remembering why I came and what I was here to do mm -hmm. I think those were the things that helped me to, to propel me and help me with that momentum going forward and look, I've stumbled and I've made so many mistakes in life and I have achieved some things and I have failed many times. But, you know, now with the years and the maturity, I can look back and, and know that this is just part of our human journey. Sure. But you didn't lose sight of your purpose, which is what so many people do. Kathy, wouldn't you say that that's true, too? I was just thinking about that on how how I questioned myself having moved from leaving my nice, beautiful home in Canada and, you know, my security, my comfort to move, bring, you know, a couple suitcases here to Los Angeles and rent out a, you know, a very tiny studio garage because I have a dream. I have something I want to achieve. And there's days that I often, there's days, let me say that often, there's days where I wonder at the, it, like, did I make the huge mistake or like, what have I done? Be, you know, I, I don't feel like I'm getting anywhere. And, um, but then again, like you said, you have to remember the reason why, you know, what is your why in life? What is that, that, that drive, that fire that's pushing you? Um, sure. I, you know, when I look around and, 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 I, and, I, and I wonder, but I also believe that when you want something so bad, you're going to do whatever it takes to get it. Um, like when I quit drinking alcohol, I wanted a new life so bad <laughs> that I would do whatever it took. I mean, you want me to do this? Okay, I'll do it. You want me to do that? Okay, I'll do it. So it, it's, it's along the same lines. When you have a dream, a goal, a vision you want to achieve, if of course um, there's mistakes involved and of course you're going to, you know, you have self doubt, but really at the bottom line is what are you going to, um, how bad do you want it? Right. That's what I think anyway. And, and I work uh -huh. every day towards that every day. I, I like how you said it, Kathy. I, I think it's, it's kind of what um, Simon Sinek says is you begin with the why. And when you have a compelling why it pulls you forward Huh. And it helps you. And, you know, when I was young, and look, our, our, all of our stories, they're, they're unfolding. Our why changes a little bit. Sometimes you don't have the full picture ahead of you. You think that this is what you'd like to accomplish in life or this is your goal, but it changes and you learn more and, you know, you tweak your why in your compelling mm -hmm. vision. But, I, I, you know, my husband always says, if, you know, one dream doesn't work out, you dream a new dream. And I think looking and knowing that you, you, go, you want to be the kind of person that does not give up. And when obstacles come, and they surely will, you're going to do what it takes. And sometimes you need to be like fire and be strong and push through. And sometimes you need to be like water and flow and find a different way to achieve your dream and your goal. But... If you, I think, set that mindset, I'm coming out stronger and wiser on the other side of the obstacle, it's half, that's halfway to winning the battle. It's still, there's still a lot of other things that need to go right, but this is kind of the foundation. Well, like another, another thing that I do um, to help myself um, 
is that I, uh, in my office, I have a wall of love is what I call it. And on that wall of love, I have pictures, I have cards, I have little gifts, I have random notes, I have uh, messages from people worldwide that um, have found some benefit in my talks or, or things that I do. And it's these pictures and it's these moments that really help me refocus. And, and I look at the, the smiling faces and, and, and I read the words of, of, um, of people, of people that, you know, that have been struggling and somehow they found some, 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 some something in what I said, well, that helps me to, to keep moving. Right. Sometimes we have to find that, um, that motivation because it's not always there and it's hard sometimes. <laughs> sure. Yeah. You know, so yeah, it, it could be very hard. I love your idea of the wall of love. I think I may borrow it, Kathy. Oh I yeah, think of course. It's such, a, yeah. <laughs> such a wonderful idea. I have a gratitude practice and I know that we're coming to, to the holiday season here. And, and uh, for me, it's how I start my day and how I set myself up because finding the motivation, it's that's part mm -hmm. of the story. And then it's also the, the daily discipline and your daily schedule. It's, it's all about consistency in achieving these big dreams and goals. And so for me, it's focusing on what I have and being grateful for yeah. the opportunities, the people, the experiences, and doing it on a daily basis so I don't forget. Stay tuned for more of Women Road Warriors coming up. Industry movement Trucking Moves America Forward is telling the story of the industry. Our safety champions, the women of trucking, independent contractors, the next generation of truckers, and more. Help us promote the best of our industry. Share your story and what you love about trucking. Share images of a moment you're proud of. And join us on social media. Learn more at truckingmovesamerica.com. Welcome back to Women Road Warriors with Shelley Johnson and Kathy Takaro. Can I read something? I I have one wall of love in my office in Canada, and I have a very small one here in uh, in LA. And I, I just read one. May I read it to you guys? Sure. It's from it's from a student. She says, Kathy, I just wanted to say thank you. I was thinking back on everything today and thinking about everything I have overcome, how things have been going lately, and how different they are today rather than a year ago. I have you to thank. I thought I was never going to live down being raped. I never thought I'd make something out of myself again. I never thought I was going to find my strength and pull myself up over and over again. I thought I made it as far as I possibly could. I used to have thoughts about suicide over and over again, thinking maybe that just maybe that would put the end to the constant triggers and flashbacks. But after meeting you and seeing how strong you were and how you keep fighting, how successful you have become, it gave me faith again to try harder to get up again and give it another go. Here I am. Over a year later, when I personally didn't think I was going to live down another year and things couldn't be better, goals have been chosen and I want to thank you. Isn't that something? Oh, that's it's, powerful. It's, wow. it's messages like that that yep. remind me that, no, Kathy, you can't stop now, <laughs> right? <laughs> Please don't stop, Kathy. This is important work. Oh this my God. So meaningful and so important. Please don't stop. Uh, and Katie, yeah. you do that all the time too. And I'm looking at the climb you had when, from when you first came into the United States, you had that drive. You were able to maintain your focus, which, you know, I think that's where a lot of people sidetrack themselves. They lose their focus. Life kind of takes over and they forget what their true goals and dreams were you know it, i'm looking in 1997 you were managing cash operations for 14 eastern european financial institutions you made your way into wall street that in and of itself being a woman is is tremendous but all of the obstacles you did have that you were able to rise above it's it's really phenomenal Th thank you shelly and you know i 
took a bus tour of New York City. One day I was not living in, in New York. I moved to New York and I took a bus tour. And on the bus, I, we passed by Wall Street and I thought, oh, I would love to work here one day. I feel that this is going to be a great place for me to learn and to also contribute. And I was very fortunate to get a, to get a job there at Citibank. It was uh, my first job on, after graduating from college. And because I spoke Bulgarian and I spoke some of the other Eastern European languages, it was a good fit for me. So I joined, I, uh, that was my, you know, my first time working in a professional environment on, you know, the 16th floor of a 111 Wall Street building. Um, and it was, you know, it was an obstacle. It, it, it was an adjustment and required a lot of learning and a lot of resetting and rethinking and refocusing. But I knew that this was my path unfolding and my story unfolding and it was part of the uh, part of the process. So I worked there for a few years and then I decided to go to business school and I thought, well, let me go to school um, at night and um, you know, continue to work. And I did that for a while, but I found that it wasn't the experience I really wanted. I wanted to actually go full-time to school, meet all the students, build those friendships. And I got a scholarship in one school and, and in New York at NYU. And I said, well, I'm a Bulgarian woman. I need to take the scholarship. But I got admitted to Yale and I said, let me spend a weekend there just to see what I would be missing because I'm not going to turn down a scholarship from NYU. Mm -hmm. And I traveled to Yale. And for that weekend, then I just fell in love with the um, with the school and with the people. And I met some uh, really great students. And I said, you know what, this is the place for me, I'm going to come here. And so I went there and I studied for two years, and I gave up the scholarship at NYU. And I had a tremendous experience. I met many of my close friends there. And I learned so much. And I think that that was another kind of a, a defining moment is sometimes you have to be bold. Yeah. And take a chance and uh, you know it's not comfortable and you have to be living a little bit outside of your comfort zone but when an opportunity presents itself and you feel that this is you feel called to do it you have to be bold mm -hmm. look at what Kathy is doing and you know impacting people all over the world and yes. lifting yeah. them up and being bold and moving to LA and living in the small place and this is just this is what we are asked to do in life. And that's how we help others. We help other women and we help not just women, but uh, people all over. I find your wisdom at such a young age just phenomenal, Katie. A lot of people, I'm impressed. Yeah. I am so impressed. I'm sitting here like my jaws just dropped. I'm like, my God, you're my hero. <laughs> yeah. Oh, well, you guys are my heroes. And <laughs> wisdom, wisdom comes in little bits and pieces. I don't think, you know, and look, I'm no longer young. So it's taken me many years to um, learn some of these lessons. But uh, <laughs> now I look at my children and I look at others and, you know, I'm thinking, what is it that, what are some lessons that have helped me? And what are the lessons that I can share with others that maybe will help them on their journey? What are some of the mm. lessons that you found to be the most profound that you could share with our listeners? Because I know that a lot of the ladies out there have goals, and they may be a little bit afraid to venture out, get their toe in the water, or mm -hmm. just dive in. Yeah, you, uh, <laughs> happy to share a few, a few things that mm -hmm. have helped me. So first of all, it's never going to be the right time. It's never going to be convenient and it's never Isn't that going the to truth? be comfortable. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Thank you for saying that. You're right. <laughs> yeah. If you wait for the right time and if you wait for when it's convenient and when you're fully prepared and not scared, this is just not going to happen. So I think some of it is helping yourself to approach things with the right mindset, with the mindset that... I will not be comfortable. It's going to be a stretch. It's going to be a bit of a challenge and a bit of a trial. I may fail. People may laugh at me. Um, I, and 
you know, I'm going to do it anyway. I'm going to try it. And if it fails, it fails. The, as, you know, as I thought about making choices like that and reaching for your, for your dreams, there are a couple of things that I learned actually, some of them from my kids. And that is to try to live as much as possible without shame and guilt. Once you make the decision that this is my future that I am pursuing, don't try not to second guess yourself too much. And if you have anxiety, if you have discomfort, fine, but don't feel guilty about it. You want it, this, you want it. There, there's no shame around it. So learning as much as possible to approach the future without shame and guilt has been an important lesson for me. Mm-hmm. Another big um, lesson, uh, when I was younger, I expected that, you know, if I make good choices, things are going to always work out for me. And as I <laughs> experienced life, I came to realize that I should be prepared and I should expect all kinds of challenges, health challenges, relationship challenges, financial challenges, emotional challenges, mental challenges, all of these will come. And when I changed my mindset and I said, yes, they will come no matter what I do, then the pivot for me and the focus was on how can I prepare? How can I strengthen myself in all of these different areas? And it could be overwhelming. I used to look at all of these different areas in life, my relationships and my health and my spirituality and my finances and and my work and think, well, how can I make improvements in all of these? It's impossible. It's just too much for me. Uh, and then I said, well, let me scale back and do one things, one thing at a time. So I found that there's m- many books that, that, you know, I love reading, but uh, one of my favorite books for productivity is called The One Thing. And it's a book that helps you figure out your priorities. And when you have so much you can work on, you just narrow it down and you pick one thing. So let's say for the month of November, you have an area of focus and you're just doing one thing a little bit better. It might be as simple as taking your supplements or drinking more water, or it might be um, you're learning and you're taking a class in the month of, um, of November, or it could be you're looking at your finances and you're working on your budget. Whatever it is, I found that if you have one area of focus, you're sprinting towards it. And that helps me move away from the overwhelm of too much to, to work on to one area of focus. I love that. I do too. Yeah, and you know what? It, it actually works for me a lot because the, the whole idea of um, I, I have eight hamsters and one wheel in my head mm-hmm. <laughs> and it's nonstop and I tend to get scattered and priorities. I, I get overwhelmed by what I need to do because I got and I'm at that point where I need an assistant. So <laughs> I, mm-hmm. I like this. I'm going to I'm going to work on that. Thank you very much. The yes. priorities and what's what is my area of focus? I really love that. Thank you. Thank, mm-hmm. thank you, Katie. Yeah. The thing is, I think people become overwhelmed. They look yeah. at the big picture. I have to write things down. I, I make a list. I've done that for years and then I cross it off. Even if it's just one or two things each day, at least I feel like I'm making progress and I'm still focused because I can get overwhelmed too. I want to do this and this and this and this. I did that as a child and my mother was always trying to draw me in. It's like, okay, let's focus now, Shelley. Yeah. Yeah, I think that there are many wonderful, powerful practices, writing things down and having mm-hmm. a bullet point journal um, and uh, I am also a, a journal writer and I've kept a diary or a journal for more than 20 years. And partly it's planning and partly it's reflection. And I think that that helps me on a weekly basis when I look forward to the week. It helps me to think, well, what are the big things I want out of this week? What are the experiences I'm looking forward to? What do I need to get done? And some things that, that are important now, and then some things that are important for the future. So I 
as I plan my week, I've learned from various, you know, various people online that I follow that I start with, what are my big, the big rocks that I am focused on for this week? And then what are the things that need to get done? Maybe they won't help me advance my goals, but they just need to get done because this is part of living. And then the last part of life I found is that you need to have fun. Life is not just about accomplishing goals and checking things off the to-do list and making progress. That certainly is important, but you need to build in fun, have fun, and be very clear what brings you joy, what delights you, and can you incorporate that on a daily basis or a weekly basis, and can you have something to look forward to? For me, that's been a real key lesson because if I keep going hard for a number of weeks, but I don't have anything fun to look forward to, I just don't have the energy to to continue. You have to have something to want to get out of bed for, right? Yeah, absolutely. And something that is that is enjoyable and fun. And, and uh, you know, for some people, it's, it's relationships and it's uh, meeting people. Sometimes it could be a trip that you're looking forward to. It could be an event, many different things. And sometimes it could be as simple as taking a, a, a nice nap on a, on, on a Sunday afternoon or eating Naps a nice meal. Good. Yep, that that works. I like my naps. And <laughs> Even if they're long cat naps, <laughs> they work for me. <laughs> That's right. Stay tuned for more of Women Road Warriors coming up. Trucking Moves America Forward, or TMAF, is building a positive image of trucking by telling the story of the hardworking drivers and industry professionals who support the industry. And you can be a part of it. Learn more about TMAF and how you can join and be a part of the industry movement working to build a strong image of trucking by visiting TMAF's website at truckingmovesamerica.com. You can also follow us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and our latest channel, TikTok. Welcome back to Women Road Warriors with Shelley Johnson and Kathy Takaro. So, Katie, you had sent me some material. You said you use the growth mindset to achieve your goals and dreams. What is that all about? Yeah, I'm a big believer in the growth mindset. So Carol Dweck was the one that first came up with the concept of uh, um, the growth mindset. And I think simply a growth mindset is the belief that our most basic abilities can be developed through dedication and hard work. They are not static and we are not born with them. But we are given what we are given, our brains and our talent, they're the starting point. And there's a lot we can do to um, improve upon them and build, build on what we've been given. So as I think about, and I'll talk about how I use the growth mindset at, 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 you know, um, throughout my uh, life, but I always think about, well, there's three different factors that that help us um, and they determine our, some of our outcomes in life. One is the genes, genetics. The other one is our environment, uh, where we are, who we surround ourselves with. And the last one is our choices. And it's the interplay of these three, what we are born with, our environment and our choices that really determine our outcomes. I love that the growth mindset focuses on our choices and our environment. We have a lot of ability and and, um, choice and agency that we can, um, that that help us to create our environment and put ourselves in environments that that are better for us. I I know you mentioned, Kathy, that when you decided to stop drinking, you probably had to put yourself in a new environment. You couldn't be surrounded by alcohol and by people who drank because it was just too difficult to actually um, do what you wanted to do. So I believe I'm a big believer in the power of putting yourself in that environment that you for your future self. 
you know that's right because if if i were to like for anybody in addiction example if they want to get clean and sober and um change their lives they have to let go of their old friends they have to let go of their own, old environment right you have to start anew and bring in new people and i i love uh, hanging out with people that are way smarter than me so that we can learn well, what, what's your secret what'd you do how'd you get there as opposed to people who will be sitting on the couch playing in video games all day do you know what I mean so you have to change your whole mindset your whole outlook your whole um, approach to life if you want change yes. and growth and- and it's a gradual process. It's not something that you can, it, sometimes mm-hmm. it can be a, a switch, but usually it's not an immediate no. switch. It usually, it, you make, you know, two steps forward, one step backwards. And that's where my rule of trying to live without shame and guilt comes in. Because when you uh, slip, um, that's, there's always a way to correct. You could always start again. It, mm-hmm. it, you can start again the next day. You can start again um, next week. And that's, that's just how it works. There's a quote I used to have on my fridge. It was called, it, was, it said, uh, if you feel you, have, you don't succeed, then redefine the, the word success. <laughs> <laughs> right yeah, it, it, it really who says yeah. success is you know millions of dollars maybe success is getting out of bed <laughs> exactly exactly and nobody knows what success is for for you you're the only one that knows what that what that success looks like in look in different stages in life success is is different i am a mother and a wife and a big part of my success is what i do with my family today mm-hmm. so mm-hmm. that's yeah. you know we measure success in different ways in different currencies so getting rid of the guilt and shame that's so important because i that's something i've had to work on because i i in the past i've been really good at packing for a guilt trip i can mm-hmm. pack the biggest suitcase you can imagine <laughs> <laughs> that is so well said. <laughs> yep. Thank you. <laughs> so take the suitcase, Shelly, throw it, throw yeah. it out <laughs> as much as you can. Yes. Yes. I think if sometimes we, especially we as women, we hold very high standards for ourselves. And if we fall a little bit short, we could be very critical of ourselves yeah. um, and we can also, of course be critical of others. So I, I think part of living with, without shame and guilt as much as possible, this is part of accepting who you are and accepting who you are comes with the good choices and the bad choices. It comes with the things that you like about yourself and the things that you dislike about yourself. But takes, I think, a certain level of emotional maturity to realize that. And once you start accepting yourself, I I think that the forces of the universe combine and then opportunities begin flowing to you more because you're not, you're, you're not wasting time and energy Mm -hmm. on guilt and shame and uh, too much anxiety. You're more focused on what's my strategy? How can I do this? Who should I learn from? What book should I read or what podcast um, to listen to instead of second guessing yourself and uh, criticizing yourself? So I think we as women, I'm generalizing a little bit, but that's what I've seen in my experience. We struggle a little bit more from that Mm -hmm. um, being very critical um, towards ourselves. It's kind of the way we've been socialized, I think. And certainly as a group, women have had to prove themselves. I think it's been a lot more energy we've had to take to say in the workplace, look, I can do this just as well as a man, if not better. So, I mean, there are a lot of challenges. And then, of course, there's the guilt that comes along, especially if you have naysayers saying, well, you're ignoring your family. You really want to be doing this, you know, uh, yeah. us we're selfish. That stuff men don't hear. Women do. Yeah, absolutely. I, I think it's sometimes we hear it from people that we love and we trust. And I think it's important to know when to ignore well-meaning advice. 
because sometimes we get well-meaning advice from people that tell us, oh, you know, don't, don't take the job, don't try this new project, don't move. Maybe you got, Kathy, some good advice from people, or some advice from, from well-meaning people that said, don't move to LA, don't try that. Oh, I yeah, sometimes, absolutely. <laughs> right? <laughs> sometimes you just have to say, I need to ignore this because yeah. people are very well-meaning, but only I know what I feel called to do and what my story is and I have to do it and that's it they're not living your life they don't have the 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 intuition that you have the dreams the goals the fire I mean I remember back when I went to nursing school and I wanted to go to nursing school in 1997 or 6 people were telling me oh no don't go to nursing yeah they're 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 laying off all these nurses and I'm like excuse me as long as the world will go turn around, you're going to need a nurse at some point, right? That's right. <laughs> so, so you yep. can't listen to people. You have to follow your dreams because it's your life, not theirs. That's right. And, yeah. and don't forget, a lot of time there's jealousy involved, right? I was people going to want, say that. Yep. Yeah. People are jealous from what the life that you're living that they can't live or they don't live or, or whatever it is. And mm-hmm. they want to hold you back and no, just push everyone away and you just keep pushing forward. <laughs> yeah. There's some yeah. people who want to get you stuck in the rut that they're in. They don't want they you do. out of that rut. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, and I think that sometimes, you know, you need to be smart enough to know who to take advice from mm-hmm. and you yeah. look around and, you know, if you want to build muscles, you're going to take advice from someone who goes to the gym and, you know, has, has built their strong physique and muscles. Right. So, I like to tell, especially my children, is take advice from people who have done this before, what you're trying to achieve, and mm-hmm. who have done it well. And right. there's so many people that will give you advice, but you know they are like Brene Brown says, uh, you know they're in the cheap seats, you are in the arena, so <laughs> you have to figure <laughs> out what you're doing, and not you know don't listen to the cheap seats in the yeah. bleachers. They are like you are in that. the arena. <laughs> yeah. Don't don't listen to. The people in the nosebleed section who are way yeah. back up there. Yeah. When they didn't buy the right ticket. <laughs> that's right. Yeah, that's right. I yeah. love that saying. <laughs> yeah. And look, I have listened to so many people, and I have to say that, uh, you know, as, as my story in my life is is unfolding, I have her I've had mentors and I've had help and I've had advice and I've had people that have helped me with practical things and they've recommended books and other things for me so I I think that's the other thing that I've learned is in there's some people you need to ignore but the other people you want to listen to because they will help you Mm -hmm. and you do not have to go through life alone there is it's not possible to what is that African saying African saying says it says if you want to go um fast go alone if you want to go far go with others go together I think it's something like like that. That that is an important lesson. Yes. No man is an island. We really do need each other. And absolutely. That's how we can achieve what the world needs in a unified group. Everyone working together and bringing out the best in everyone. It's a wonderful symbiosis. Stay tuned for more of Women Road Warriors, coming up. Kathy DeCaro is nothing short of amazing. She not only drives the world's biggest truck as a heavy equipment operator in northern Alberta, Canada, she's an international motivational speaker and the author of Dream Big an autobiography about overcoming a lifetime of trauma and abuse that led to dreams of success. Kathy inspires people the world over to change their lives and improve their self-worth. Her book will change your life. She's passionate about personal growth and believes anyone can change their circumstances and overcome their obstacles if they believe in themselves. Her life will amaze you and seriously inspire you. Be sure to order a copy of her book, Dream Big, on Amazon.com.
Industry movement Trucking Moves America Forward is telling the story of the industry. Our safety champions, the women of trucking, independent contractors, the next generation of truckers, and more. Help us promote the best of our industry. Share your story and what you love about trucking. Share images of a moment you're proud of. And join us on social media. Learn more at TruckingMovesAmerica.com. Welcome back to Women Road Warriors with Shelley Johnson and Kathy Takaro. Now, Katie, you also said that you use gratitude as a practice and, and you work on energy and productivity. I know we only have mm-hmm. a few more minutes, but I thought maybe you could touch on that. Yes. Let, I think one of the most important um, gift that we have is our energy. And of course, it's the gift of time as well. So mm-hmm. I'm very mindful every day. How do I use my time and how do I manage my energy? And I know that I want to live a full life. I want to have time for my family and friends. I want to have time for my career and for my projects and for helping people in my community and, and, and others. And so I need to be, from the moment I wake up until the evening, I need to have a certain level of energy. And I used to think, well, you know, what What helps me? What What drives my energy and some of it of course is doing things that I like that's that you know that gives me energy but it's impossible to be every day all day to be Mm -hmm. doing things that you enjoy that just is not realistic and so I, I spend some time thinking and trying to optimize what can I do to keep my energy at a high level so that I can have the full life that that I want to live And I learned a few things. So there, you know, obviously some things we all know, um, they're they're easier to say, hard to do, but taking good care of our physical health, getting enough sleep, eating as much as possible nutritious food, taking my vitamins, those are things that give me energy. And if I don't do those, I, you know, after a few nights of not getting enough sleep, Mm -hmm. I feel it and I'm not going to be able to operate at the level that I want to. So there's some foundational things. The same, I think, is very true for our mental, emotional, and spiritual health. There's certain practices, you know, they're different for everyone. But uh, for me, it's that morning gratitude practice and writing in my journal and reading inspirational things that help me set myself for the day and prepare myself for the experiences that I want to have or the experiences that will come my way that maybe I don't welcome, but I have to go through them anyway. Um, and then I productivity has been a very big, big part of, of um, my learning as well. So once, you know, I, I figured out what are these foundational energy practices that I need to do so that I can have the energy to do the things that I want to do. One of the things that became clear to me also is that energy is a habit. And I've noticed that some people, uh, even if, you know, even if they've gotten a good night's sleep and even if they're in decent health, they complain and, you know, they're tired a lot and other people are able to push through and, they're able to kind of maintain a high energy. And I thought about that and I've watched that. And I think that energy is not just physical, but it's also a mindset and a habit. Yeah. So, so that, that's been, uh, you know, that's been one of the, the practices. And then productivity. Mm-hmm. Um, look, in order to be able to do all of these things in life, it, this is, uh, it's a question of, um, prioritization. And I read somewhere, I forget who, who, um, where this quote came from, but it's, it says that successful people say no a lot, but the very successful people say no almost all the time. Because every time that you say no to something, it's because you're saying yes to something else. And if Mm -hmm. you already know what you're saying yes to, it's Mm -hmm. easier to say no. So again, as women, it's, it's sometimes it's harder for us to say yes. no. Oh my goodness. It's yes. A, That's it, very true. <laughs> it takes learning and it, it, it takes practice and uh, sometimes we get it right and sometimes we don't. 
And when we say no to something, we're saying yes to ourselves, which is a good thing. Mm -hmm. We're we're putting ourselves in the priority chain where we need to be. Uh, Katie, I love your insight here. I I would love to talk to you for another hour. Where can people reach out to you? Because I'm sure that that there are going to be lots of questions and people would like to, to learn more from you. The best place to reach out to me is on LinkedIn, Ekaterina Curry. And I'm happy to connect with you listeners and I'm happy to talk to people. And uh, I really look forward to and welcome the conversation around the growth mindset and around those practices that help us to live a fulfilling life and to achieve our dream. Wonderful. And your name is spelled E K A. T-E-R-I-N-A. So it's E. Katerina Curry, and people can find you on LinkedIn. Yes. Excellent. Excellent. Wow. You are an amazing woman, Katie. This has been so much fun. Isn't it? It's been I know. So- it's very useful and very practical and just makes so much sense. And I'm really, really glad that uh, you came on our show today. Thank you very much. Yes, Thank absolutely. you so much for inviting me. It's been such a pleasure to talk to you, Kathy and Shelley, and think about these issues and discuss them and learn from each other. And look, I'm going to be making my wall of love pretty soon yeah. because I <laughs> love that concept. <laughs> yes. It's really quite powerful. You'd be surprised. <laughs> it's great. Very, it sounds very powerful. And I, I'm looking forward to trying it this, this holiday season. Yeah, it's very so much. uplifting. Okay. You have to uplift yourself because I found that if you wait for other people to do it, you're going to be waiting a long time. That's very true. <laughs> Kathy, yeah, you've got you some fabulous ideas. This is terrific. And thank you, Katie. <laughs> this has been, we've had a great conversation. It's been so much fun. Thank you, Shelly. And thank you, mm-hmm. Kathy. You've been listening to Women Road Warriors with Shelly Johnson and Kathy Takaro. If you want to be a guest on the show or have a topic or feedback, email us at info at tncradio.live. Thank you for listening to another great interview on tncradio.live. And don't forget, be sure to subscribe to our podcast of Women Road Warriors. It's free. All of the material you hear on tncradio.live on our website, our broadcasts, or our podcasts are copyrighted. There can be no distribution without the express consent of tncradio.live and its partners. For inquiries, write us at info at tncradio.live.